Today, I'm going to show you another simple recipe that I like to use, my version of Chinese dumplings or pot stickers, depending where you're from. Stay tuned. This is already uh, ground beef. I've already got the ground beef put aside. It was basically just a, a burger, 85-15 uh, burger. Uh, you can use regular ground beef if you like, or if you don't, you know, hamburgers work really well for this. Uh, for the uh, the chicken version, uh, I've got just a boneless, skinless uh, chicken thigh, which I'm gonna grind up myself using uh, the Ninja Foodi uh, Power Nutribowl uh, version. I'm gonna use this thing here. So before we get started, uh, I'm gonna season this up a little bit. So get a little black pepper on it. And you don't have to do it this way here. You can you can get your own ground uh, ground chicken. I just find that the ground chicken is usually a breast. It's, a, it's usually the, uh, the light meat, not too much flavor in it. Uh, so you'll, you'll have to add a whole lot of flavor. Uh, just added a little salt, a little pepper, some onion powder. All right, and we're gonna get that into the Nutribowl. This is the one with the paddle on it. That'll help in case it rides up the sides. So let's put that on. It's just gonna be really quick. Not gonna take long at all. Okay, let's just bring that to the side. All right, and I'm gonna get a little bit of the garlic in here. And then put a little bit into the beef version too. So we separate it nicely. A Little bit of the green onion in here. And add just a little bit of sesame oil, not too much because a little will go a long way. It's very potent oil. If you don't have a sesame oil, uh, you can use an olive oil, uh, whatever's on hand. You, you want to add flavor wherever you can. So I'm just going to just seal that up, tap it to the bottom, right into the blade. And this is only going to run, I'm just going to pulse it a few times until I, I see it all mashed up. So we're just going to give it a couple of pulses. Okay, and I think, I think we're pretty much good there. Just tap it, tap it away from the blade so I can see it. All right. And there we go. So you have a nice, smoother consistency. You can smell that sesame oil right, right out of the gate. It's, it's really potent. So I'm just gonna clean that off here. Don't wanna lose any of that goodness. And you can mix, you can, you can mix and match any of these meats. You can add pork to it. Uh, a chicken and pork version uh, works well. So I'm just gonna get that into the bowl, just like that. Get all the remaining bits here, here. All right. And as you can see from the top camera, I mean, it's smashed up pretty nice. Uh, that's why you don't wanna uh, overwork it too much. Uh, is it'll just get clumpy and uh, the faster this unit goes, uh, more likely it is it's going to cook it. So you want to, uh, uh, it does build up a little heat. So you want to keep it pretty quick. All right. So now on both of them, I'm going to add same, same stuff to both. So we have, uh, this is uh, some teriyaki. So we're going to put a little bit in there and a little bit in there. Okay, a little soy sauce. Split that half and half. Okay, and I have, here's Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, whichever way you say it. Okay, probably half a tablespoon. Doesn't need a whole lot, it's pretty potent. Get a little bit of this chopped up, finely chopped cabbage. And you can buy it already shredded. You just finish chop, chopping up as much as you want. Okay, get that in there. Same thing with the carrots. You can shred them up yourself and chop them or buy them shredded. 
Get that in there, a little bit more. Good. Some green onions. Let's just finish it off. And a little extra garlic bit in there because we already have garlic in there. All right. So just going to mix this up. And you don't want to, again, you don't want to overwork it too much. Just get everything blended up or mixed up. You don't want to blend it up. I'm going to mix it just so everything's incorporated. All right. So that, oh, great smelling right away. All right. Do the same here with the chicken. So we're just going to mix that up really, really well. So uh, everything disperses within the, uh, the mixture. So we get a little bit of crunch, a little bit of different flavors in every bite. Okay. So now that we got that pretty, pretty mixed up, we're going to let this sit about 15, 20 minutes just to kind of absorb. You want to do it overnight, like a marinade, go for it. Keep it in the fridge, cover it up. Uh, so I'm going to let this sit for a little bit while I clean this mess up here and uh, get my, uh, my skillet ready. So I've already started making uh, some of these. I'll show you real quick. It's real simple uh, on how to shape them. You want to get your wonton wrapper. Okay, and I, I like to keep it, the points up like a, uh, uh, like a diamond. All right, and going to need a little bit of water. You just want to moisten, moisten the edges. Now you can do that afterwards or before. I like doing it before. It just makes things a lot easier. And take your meat mixture. And you're only going to need about a half a tablespoon. If you uh, overpack it, it's going to break the wonton wrapper. So uh, I use like a small meatball size, but a half a tablespoon is, is all you're going to need. Take the bottom corner, put it to the top corner like a pyramid. And then I just use my index fingers like a pyramid and just press that down. All right. Then I wet my fingers a little bit and just run them along the edges here. That'll help stick uh, the two edges together. And uh, you can just leave it just like that. It looks like a ravioli. Now, if you want one that look like uh, a little bit more fancy, you just take it and just fold that corner like that and pinch it and do the same. You do two on each side here like that, and just fold it, pinch it, fold it, pinch it, tap the bottom so you get a nice flat bottom, and there's one. So I'll show you how to, how to do that again one more time. Take your wonton wrapper, moisten the edges, and you only have to moisten maybe about a half inch or so, not too much. Take about a half tablespoon of your mixture, right into the center there. Just pack it, pack it a little bit, corner to corner, bottom corner to top corner, and then just use your index fingers to press down. You have your ravioli here. Moisten the edges again. And it's real simple, not too hard to do. This is, it's actually, you can get your kids involved and make it fun for them too. Okay, then pinch the edges like this, just Rotate it here, or just just want to fold them on top of themselves and uh, and pinch the edges. Tap the bottom down a little bit so you have a nice looks like a Chinese temple. There you go. All right, so uh, I'm going to clean up this mess here. I'm going to make this couple of last ones here, and uh, then we'll get into cooking it. I'll show you two ways of doing it. I'll show you a air fryer way, which I'm sure you guys are waiting for that version. Uh, and the uh, pan style, which uh, is my preferred method. Uh, I just like the texture of the pan style, but I'll show you both either way. All right, so I, I've already cooked some of them. I put them in my freezer because I wanted to par cook them and freeze them for later use. I, I got about 30 of them out of this batch, uh, so about 15 of each. So I left a few here uh, just to show you how, to, how I cook them, how I season them. So I, I'm going to leave, leave about three or four of them for the air fryer, and I'll show you... Uh, what that's going to look like. So this is the Ninja Foodi uh, Never Stick 10-inch pan that I'm using on the induction cooktop. 
So I'm gonna get that started. I like using the temperature on the, on the induction cookers uh, just so I can uh, manage the temperature that it's working instead of the number from one to 10. Uh, so I like to set it uh, at about 400 degrees. All right, so what I'm gonna do is real quick, just a little uh, avocado spray. You can use uh, a vegetable oil too, if you like. So just give that a little spray. All right, so I'm gonna take some of these and, uh, and as you can see, there's a nice little flat bottom and I'm gonna put them into the pan with the flat bottom uh, down uh, and the peak uh, facing up. That'll give me a nice crust at the bottom. So I'm just gonna get those in here like that. Okay, and we're gonna let that toast up a little bit. So in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna take these four here. I preheated my Ninja Foodi uh, air fryer uh, to about 400 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes just to get it nice even temperature. So I'm gonna get these into the basket uh, and the setting for the cooking in, uh, these in the air fryer, uh, I found that for me, the temperature that worked best in the Ninja Foodi uh, is, uh, is about 320 for about five minutes. And uh, I'll, what I'll do first is I'll give these a spray. Uh, I'll spray the basket too. Okay, so give that a spray. I'm gonna get those into the basket. This basket, this basket is kind of warm, so I'm gonna get these into the basket. And again, standing up the same way. Get them into the uh, Ninja Foodi uh, air fryer. Again, 320 degrees for about five minutes. So put that in there. Air crisp at 300, say 325, doesn't have a 320, so at 325 for five minutes is pretty much all you're gonna need. And the, uh, the meat will cook uh, evenly in there. It's just, again, there's just a, like a, a tablespoon, a half a tablespoon in there, so it's not gonna take long. So let's take a look at these things now in the pan, and you can see the bottoms, nice and toasty, getting nice and crispy. So as they're doing that, I, I like to put them on their sides. Now you can use the tongs if you like, but I think that the peak on these uh, ravioli or these uh, dumplings make it easier to, to work by hand. Or if you have chopsticks, I haven't learned how to use the chopsticks yet. I, you know, it's kind of comedic when I'm in a restaurant with chopsticks, uh, it's a sight. So if you guys have any tips on how to use chopsticks the proper way, let me know. I'm mainly a, a fork kind of guy. So now I'm gonna give these a spray because I, I want to soften them a little bit and also give them a, a little bit of flavor. So just a light spray here. Okay. And you're also gonna need a little bit of chicken stock or you can use a little bit of water if you, if you like, it's up to you. Uh, it's just that uh, you want to seal in the moisture, so you're going to need your, your lid for this also. So once this starts toasting on this side here too, we'll, uh, yeah, see, it's pretty quick. These induction cooktops work great. And they're, they're very quick once they get heated. Okay, so, so now uh, to give it the, the steam uh, look or if you want to keep cooking them this way here, uh, it's, you know, it's fine. Just uh, get a nice crust on them and they're ready to go for dipping. I'm going to add uh, probably a tablespoon, a couple of tablespoons of uh, chicken stock like that. And we want to put the top on like that for about you know, a minute or two just uh, to get everything steamed in there, to get everything softened and, and looking good. So let's just get the liquid around all of them. I'm going to drop the heat a little bit to about 320. Uh, so we, we're just not overcooking these things. Don't want them to get turned into a mush pie. We, we like to keep them as dumplings. Let's take a look. Oh, watch that steam. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of the, uh, the liquid pretty much evaporated. So, so now, just want to make sure that 
we get both sides flavored. Okay. Just give it a little spin here. Because like I said, I mean, it's, it's only about a half a tablespoon of, of meat that has to cook. It's going to cook really quick, a minute or two, it's, it's already done. The air fryer's got about a minute left here too, and I'll show you when those come out too. Uh, so let's get these out on a plate. Okay, so let's turn that off. Now these induction cooktops, if you've ever used them, it, they get hot, so they got a fan that goes, so you, know, you have to excuse that fan noise a little bit. But uh, they do take time to cool down once you do turn them off, so you've got to let them, uh, let them do their thing. Okay, so just gonna put that on the dish here. Okay, and I like this. I like to stand them up. They just they just look good that way. So get a nice nice look on them from the top. Well, the air fryer just about to finish. I'm gonna pull those out too. And I'm going to show you what, uh, what those look like. Okay. So, so these just came out. You can take a look. They're nice and crispy on the edges. They're very hot. So I'll show you what, they, what the differences are. I'll put them side by side here. Okay, let's get that in there. So, so you can see the difference is uh, these here are a little glossy, the ones we did in the, in the pan, a little glossy, where these are a little drier and you got more of a crust on, on the edges here, you get a little bit of crisp. And that's why I said use a lower temperature, about 325 uh, is what we use for five minutes. Uh, just so if you use too much, too high of a temperature, the edges will burn. You'll get dark edges. It'll, it'll be almost too crunchy. If that's what you like, that works too. You'll get like some bubbling effect here. Like you can see some of that, just like an egg roll. And you can see my egg roll. I'll put the egg roll video here, how I did those. Uh, you, you get kind of the same idea with these things. That's, uh, let's give one of these a taste. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try one of these uh, air fried ones here. And we'll, we'll cut it up. We'll cut it in the middle to see if it's cooked. And it should be, should, should be pretty cooked. Uh, I'm gonna cut this one here up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right. And it's still pretty hot. So you can hear, you know, it's nice and crunchy if you, uh, if you like the crunch. So I'm just gonna cut that down the middle and you can see the meat is nice and cooked. Say nice and cooked. Smells really good with that teriyaki sauce and uh, all the seasoning we used in there. Really good. Mmm, smells good. So uh, now you can use this gyoza dipping sauce, basically a dump, dumpling sauce. Or if you're like me, you like to make your own. So what I do is I, I add some uh, soy sauce, a little bit of agave, uh, some sriracha, uh, a drop of uh, sesame seed oil, a little salt, pepper, some fresh garlic, onion, a little ginger, and I make my own sauce. I give it a nice stir. It gives it a little sweet, a little heat. Uh, it goes really good with these, uh, uh, with these dumplings. So let's give it a good dip here. Hmm. Good, really good. Let's try another one here. And the great thing about cutting these in half or cutting the tip off them, you can scoop into the, the sauce. Use it to scoop it, because it'll, it'll pretty much stay in there. Mm. Mm. That's really good. So now uh, on these here, the softer ones, you can use them with, uh, with like a noodle or some, uh, some fried rice or uh, some stir fry. Put them out along the edges or you know, use them as a side appetizer. They're fantastic. Hope you enjoyed my version of Chinese dumplings uh, or pot stickers. Uh, again, let me know in the, in the comment section below what you guys call them. Give me some likes. Give me some comments. Uh, share it if you, if you like the video. Check out the videos here on the side that uh, we place here from our playlist. We hope you enjoyed spending some time with us. We always enjoy your support uh, here on the channel. 
and I'll see you in the next video.